My photo walk today is a little different. We're taking a tour of the LA Jewish deli scene, starting here at Langer's, home of the famous number 19. And we're going to continue through Cantor's and Jerry's and Nate and Al's and some of the other classic establishments. We're going to meet up with some friends later, make some new friends, and just have a really good time exploring the dying art of the Jewish deli. Let's begin, of course, by eating. Mmm. Mmm. You think the delicatessen and you're looking at wonderful memories of matzo ball soup, overstuffed hot pastrami sandwiches, pickles, and amazing rye bread. But sadly, for a variety of reasons, delis have taken it on the chin and many are struggling to stay alive. In the past few years, we've lost Junior, Sally's, Billy's, and many Jerry's locations in LA. And in New York, even the fabled Carnegie and Stage delis are now closed as well. Our photo walk today is a celebration of the Jewish deli and keeping the tradition alive. We hope that watching this episode will make you want to run out and support your local deli. Our photo tips today are pretty simple. Capture the sights and feel of the deli. All the color from the signs, crazy t-shirts, waiters and waitresses, and of course the food. We'll have detailed tips on how to capture a great food shot in a dark restaurant a little later. Our deli photo walk will take you from the heart of downtown Los Angeles through Midtown and ending in Northridge. As always, check our blog, blog.jeffersongram.com, for more detailed mapping information. Langer's, which is one of the oldest delis in Los Angeles, is world-renowned for their hot pastrami, which some say is even better than New York. It just melts in your mouth. It's like uh, candy to me anyway. Owner Norm Langer broke it down for us. The secret of hot pastrami is steaming it until it's tender. There's too many delis across the United States have a tendency to just warm it. When you get the pastrami in from your supplier, it's been brined, it's been smoked, it's been rubbed, and it's legally edible, but it's tough. And you've got to steam it long enough to break down the tissues. And that can take anywhere from two and a half to five hours in live steam. And that's the reason our pastrami is tender. It shrinks about 35% when you do that. Okay, and you do that every morning? Every morning. At 5 a.m. right here? Five, 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 36 o'clock when my crew comes in, they steam it for the day. From the old to the new, Wexler's Deli is in the heart of downtown at the Los Angeles Grand Central Market. Wexler's ditches the big booth that we've come to associate with delis in a more contemporary, hip atmosphere, but the food remains the same. Here, it's also about pastrami and egg dishes. From Wexler's, head into the car on the 10 freeway to continue to the Midtown Delis. We are headed to Factors, where we had dinner with our friend Josh, who happens to be the rabbi of the Manhattan Beach Synagogue. He's kosher, and thus no pastrami, no corned beef, no tongue. There are other great Jewish delicacies that do deserve recognition. There's tuna fish, there's lox, there's blintzes, there are all those things that, uh, that I can eat that are vegetarian or dairy-based and not meat-based and you can definitely find at a deli. Do you have a favorite? Um, I'm, a, I'm a blintz guy. It's, uh, I, I like a good blintz, so uh, I think that's the way I'll go. This is also, I think, an important way to tell if it's a good deli, is how do they do on the pickles. We're now at Canner's Deli. If you think Los Angeles Jewish Deli, Canner's is rather synonymous with LA. It's the most famous. I have an egg cream here with seltzer water. Throw that in, makes it fizz a little bit, and a Great chocolate cookie. So dig up. Here we go. At Canner's, we ran into Alex Canner, a great grandson of the original founder, who was signing a new book he just wrote with his sister Gina about the deli. His recipe for saving the delicatessen? You know, continue to stay innovative and adapt to the next generation. We now have gluten free bagels and a vegan Reuben and, and uh, vegetarian matzo ball soup, just trying to keep up with the times and. Um, being technology forward, thinking about you know the next generation, food delivery, all the all the things that happen outside of our four walls as well. But what can deli fans do to keep them alive? Just, just, spread just the keep word. keep spending money. <laughs> um, just um, just really promoting deli culture, taking pictures, posting it on social media. I mean, we all got to kind of band together and and keep the tradition alive.
Next, it was on to Nate and Al, the Beverly Hills favorite that since 1947 has been a major showbiz hangout. Jerry Seinfeld went to Nate and Al for an episode of his Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee with the late, great Bob Einstein. At Nate and Al, I ordered the half-size turkey sandwich on double-baked rye bread. This is a half a sandwich. Can you imagine what the full size looks like? From new friends, it was on to the valley and some old friends, Bob and Marla, at Art's Deli, where every sandwich is a work of art. Art himself is no longer with us, but the classic deli hangs on with sky-high sandwiches that just defy gravity. Bob is a regular. You've got to hear him wax on about his love of delis. So I developed a taste for delis when I was growing up in New York. It was kind of a standard um, fare for, for Jewish kids. And so with some frequency, we would go out to lunch or dinner at a Jewish deli. And I developed a taste for the matzo ball soup and the pastrami and the other sort of standard um, Jewish uh, food. Uh, and so when I moved to L.A. Uh, 40 plus years ago, uh, I still had that taste and I found that delis were not as plentiful uh, or as authentic as they were in New York. But there are a few. And what's great about this deli photo walk is that we're going to explore the best delis in L.A. with that New York taste. Sunday morning, I have eggs. Oh boy. Oh boy. There's your pickles. Oh. Yum. Okay. That's a sandwich. We're following it right down here. Oh my. Uh, Are we done with delicious. this one? Yes, thank you. What do you think, Bob? A work of art? A work of art. Now, this is the skinny sandwich. Yeah. So, so we're going light here. This is from the light menu. So normally the sandwiches have more meat, but if you want just a taste of it, this is the perfect size. From Arts, it was down the road to Jerry's Deli, the delicatessen, with a bowling alley attached. Jerry's was a little camera shy this day, so we continued on to Uncle Bernie's, a really homey neighborhood restaurant in Encino, where we all shared a potato knish. A knish is a, a pastry of sorts, but it's not a sweet. It's usually traditionally with a potato inside, but there are varieties with meat and, and kasha, and spinach and uh, all different varieties. But I think the classic knish is a potato knish. Yeah. After Uncle Bernie's, we headed off to Tarzana for one of the great LA finds. Okay, so we're at Bee's Bakery. Bee's is attached to Mort's Deli in there, surrounded by amazing Jewish cookies. I wish that you could smell what it smells like in here. All the amazing chocolates, the black and white cookies, which I love, and all sorts of different things. And there's a whole bunch of salamis in there as well. Bee's Bakery. Home to such delicacies as boppy cake, chocolate Russian strip, cinnamon yum yum, and Bob's favorite, the rainbow cookie. And it's, got, it's got layers of cake with layers of jelly, jam, in between, and some chocolate on top. Mm. So what's in this box is a vanilla cookie. It's the white part of the black and white cookie, which is one of my dad's favorite cookies. And you only prefer half. And I only prefer the half that is white because it's vanilla and I love vanilla and I don't do chocolate. We finally ended our deli walk at Brent's in Northridge. It's out of the way unless you happen to live in the valley, but definitely worth the trip. First of all, they put rye bread on your table. That, that wins me over. You got pickles, pickles right here. You got black and white cookies and salamis hanging. What more do you need? It's okay. what, what jumps out photographically, at, since we're on a photo walk? Food. We're taking pictures of, of great meats and rye bread and pickles and cheesecake. We're trying to give you the feel of a deli through video and photos without the smells. I thought the, the ultimate soundbite today was when I spoke to the great-grandson of Mr. Cantor. In his 20s, he said, 
post photos on social media. Spread the word, that's what's gonna do it. I think what the deli gives is that sense for some of childhood memories, of smells, of foods that they grew up with. So I think originally that was the deli's popularity, is that they could, were coming in from the old country and could get some food that really tasted like home and, and gave them memories of their parents, their grandparents, things like that. Today, I think it's really kind of a sense of Jewish culture, right? It's, uh, it's what we talk about when we talk about Judaism for so many, and that's matzo ball soup or pastrami and rye. And so I think it, it serves as that, as a connection to their people, to family, to, uh, to sitting around the table, which uh, brings back so many uh, hopefully good times. Before we go on, a quick recap on some of the photo tips from today's photo walk. Number one, this is street documentary photography at its finest. Your job is to use your camera eye and see what really jumps out at you showing off the sights, sounds, and feel of the deli. Number two, food photography. You can only photograph so many hot pastrami and tongue sandwiches before going broke, but I have a better idea. Get up out of your seat and walk over to where the sandwiches are being made. They always go up on the counter for the wait staff to pick them up, and there's usually a lag time Go photograph them before the waiter or waitress gets there. Number three, people photography. It's kind of hard to shoot people as they're sitting in their booth having a good time without invading their space. Got a better idea. You really want to get the waiters and waitresses. They are the characters. And usually if you ask them nicely, they will pose for you. Number four, shooting delicacies behind the glass counter. It can be tough because there's so many reflections. I like to put my camera lens right as close to the glass as possible to try to eliminate the glare. If that doesn't work, do your best and then crop in an editing program later. Number five, white balance. It can be tough shooting inside some of these delis with their overhead fluorescent light. Sometimes the colors come out kind of yellow. One solution, try shooting in RAW, which you can do on your smartphone and on your camera and fixing it in a photo editing program later. If all else fails, go to black and white, or better yet, try moving your position to as close as you can get to the window light, which will help eliminate some of the fluorescence. Number six, food shots and getting rid of the distracting backgrounds. Use portrait mode on your smartphone if you can and just try to blur that background. Number seven, the smartphone flashlight trick. Don't forget to use it to help illuminate your sandwich in a dark restaurant. And number eight, speaking of the dark, your establishing deli sign shot. It will always look best when they turn on the colors right after sunset. That's the best time to get it. So that's a wrap for our photo walk of the LA deli scene. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, go out and support your local deli today. Another request as well, please like, please share, please comment on this video. Please subscribe, stay tuned for more videos. And if you have any questions, look for me on Twitter or Instagram where I'm at Jefferson Graham. I'll see you on the next photo walk. Bye.